Alright, keep walking around. All right, what's going on, everybody? Uh, I'm Winslow, and this video, I'm gonna walk you through my track, Everything and More, featuring Pete Simpson. If you haven't heard it yet, go check it out. Links in the description, all that stuff. Um, yeah, I hope this isn't, we shouldn't go too long, but I mean, we'll see. Sometimes I just gloss over things, sometimes it's every little detail, so. Anything, anyway, if you haven't heard it, Sounds a bit like this. Yeah, and that's all you get for free. Go stream it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I don't know. Where do we start? It's kind of. A track. Anyway, usually let's start with the drums because that's kind of where this started. I mean, I guess a little backstory before like Pete got involved and this was like one of the first demos I think I sent to the hospital and like one of the folders of demos. And I just had it as an instrumental for a while. So if you've like tuned into any of my Twitch streams and met, let's say the past six to almost probably a year, you've probably heard this at some point in some version of it. Um, either playing it or I was like making it on Twitch because, but anyway, that's how the last year has been. But anyway, let's get down to the drums. What do they sound like? Nothing too technical, too crazy. Kick, clap. It's bounced out. Give me the whole clap sound. So a nice layered clap. One layer. That sound. That sound. <laughs> All together. Now, at this point, I should be like, yeah, because I wanted this frequency and I wanted this sound. And I was just hitting, throwing stuff together to like get a sound I like. That's basically it. Then you just bust it all together. Clap bus. And then stack a bunch of effects until you have the sound you want. I wish it was, I could be more technical, but that's just kind of the way it is. I mean, for a more like realistic answer, it's just like you're trying to get a specific sound. Like me, I'm trying to get a specific sound. So there's things I'm looking for which in the, within each sample and then busting them together or grouping, whatever you want to call it. And then sticking effects to, you know, carve out the sound. So like you have an EQ, get rid of the low end, kind of tame some frequencies that are in there. Another EQ, more or less the same. I really don't know why that's there, actually. <laughs> a reverb to help fill out the sound a little bit. Transient master to help tighten the sound in a way. Yeah. Another EQ. I mean, it's all mixing slash the sound design just to get the sound I want because all those layers separately sound like which isn't bad actually but then you know once you have effects and stuff on them it kind of th I, in that way it kind of thins it out and something I want to point out just because we're like isolating sounds in isolation it might sound weak or like what are you doing but within the full mix of like the break and everything, it makes more sense. So that's kind of why you hear when you're mixing, don't solo things because you're hearing two different contexts and one doesn't necessarily mean it'll work in the other. Like by itself, the sound might be strong with everything. It might be too overpowering or too much by itself. It might be weak, but together with all the other sounds, it fits right in there, you know, Goldilocks rule just right. So this is kind of one of those things. And I think kind of one of my things is just like if I isolate any of these layers, it's gonna sound but but altogether it sounds decent. So anyway, breaks, percussion.
Like it's mostly built around like the hot pants. Another shaker. Another shaker. Hi-hat sort of shaker-esque kind of sound. Cowbell from the worm because you got to have it in there. This break. Just the, just the beginning of it. Yep. And then there's like snaps and other stuff that come in. Bongos. I call them the Donkey Kongs. Some of you'll get that. <laughs> Not like it's an obscure reference or anything. But that's kind of the break. It just, everything just kind of fits together. A nice rolling, um, fairly consistent drum break, you know? It's just about finding the right layers and the right things to help it move along. Like there's nothing crazy about it. Yeah, it goes into some parallel compression just to give it a bit more oomph. Nice drum reverb and into the drum bus, which slaps it all together even more. So without any other drum bus plugins, and with them, it's fairly the same sound, actually. But, I mean, like anything else, there's some EQ. Compression, a reverb. I've been putting a reverb just straight on the drum bus instead of as a send lately. There's a lawnmower going outside. <laughs> Deesser for the hi hats. And some of the transients that are a bit pikey. Spiky, not pikey. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, and a limiter. Just shaving off a bit. And to kind of look through here, this plugin called Smexoscope is this a scope plugin to see what's really peaking, um, what I'm doing to the sound. More often than not, I'm just trying to tame peaks in a way that doesn't affect the final output of the master. And drums are one of the things this happens with. I mean, they're the most um, spiky kind of sound, if you want to use that adjective. And they're fairly tame, because I kind of do it in stages, like the channels themselves, the bus, bus they go into, then the final processing. Um, yeah, so that's the drums more often than not. If you want a, a more in-depth view of how I like kind of put breaks and stuff together, there's a few videos on my channel. Um, just search like drum breaks or something like that, liquid breaks, something like, I don't know, it's been a while, but... uh. Yeah. Bass. I mean, it's drum and bass. It there's nothing to worry about. That's what it sounds like. Might need headphones to hear it, you know. Yeah, I already bounced it to audio, but it's basically like a saturated triangle wave. That's usually what I roll with. <laughs> roll. With a bit of saturation to sort of kind of bring out those, you can hear like a high frequency hiss, not hiss, but like character of a sound. You can see it over in the spectrum meter as well. Just so it, uh, you know, speaks a bit. You can't really hear that. That comes in like the second half. Bit more character. These are all simple, like, saw wave, triangle wave, just a little bit of distortion. Um, nothing to, like, I need to go in depth. It's just adding a bit more character to the overall bass sound. It's this. Yeah, it adds a bit more. Yeah, so add more texture. That's it. 
because again this track is more about like the is more about the, like the the whole picture instead of one kind of thing and you know the vocals and everything so it didn't i mean i wrote it in the beginning as just an instrumental and the vocals came later and that's where mixing comes it's like yeah you know what i mean right <laughs> that's basically bass so what we got drums and bass Simple, just following that chord progression. Um, as usual, I mean, I'm walking through this, I'm kind of trying to go somewhat detailed, but not too like in the weeds. If you have questions and stuff, feel free to hit me up either in the comments or DM on whatever platform, you know, easy to get uh, in contact with. I'm always up for asking, answering questions. I ask a lot of questions too. Anyway, let's go to like the main sample, which is a, uh, what this is built around. So without any effects. And that's just looped. Is it, does it go longer then? Huh, it's just that. Yeah, this is the infamous, it will come from the infamous splice, but I think the original sample is actually a bit more than this. And then I cut it up and did some things. Let's take a second to look for it. Yep, so I just pitched it down. Nothing too technical, you know. As you'll see, I'm not all that technical. I'm just a musical person. Yep. Then you give it the old filter because that's what makes it liquid, the low pass, and you just roll it out with some effects and delays and whatnot. There's like a string part that comes in every now as I kind of feel. Another sample from Splice probably. <laughs> And it's cool because I didn't need a whole lot else, much else going on just because there's so much within like the, the main sample itself. So kind of got lucky. There's some flutes from Contact. That I wrote in the chord progression for that. Um, what else is going on? Some roads. Pete played this in, he sent me this. So he actually did some productions. I mean, he did his own vocals and stuff, but I mean, some instrumentation as well, which was awesome. Cause I would not have thought of any of that, but Pete's the man, so. Then he did some guitars as well. Then now you know. Yeah, he did a few other things that I end up not using like some synth lines and stuff, but yeah. Then we have like a pads, pad bus. I just call them all the same. They're just like background atmosphere stuff. Drone. That's a piano from Contact. I mean, yeah, just me throwing stuff at the wall. Um, one of Pete's samples. Yep, then my thing is you make, you bust it all together because it's just for pads, background sounds. Basically, you want to make a wash of noise and sound, right? What better way to do that than just stick it in a reverb and delay? So all that same stuff goes all through the same bus and then it's filtered, unfiltered, that kind of thing. As in low pass, high pass, that kind of thing.
And that's, yeah. I mean, it's again, it's just a bed of sound behind like the main sample, the vocals and everything else. It pads the sound. Yeah. And it's basically Valhalla Shimmer and Replica from Native Instruments. So a delay and a long reverb. That's it. What's some EQ and low pass filtering every now and then and delays and panning and all this stuff just to make it what I said, a pad. Yeah, there you go. You're understanding. You're starting to get it's just like kind of little things here and there that add a bit of character or nuance or whatever you call it to the sound to help provide um bed of sound. I just keep saying the same thing over and over, so let me just shut up. Other than explaining with what I'm doing. Um, yeah. So, I mean, all together, it just works. Oh, yeah, that the sam main sample like gates at the next half. Yeah. You got the bass. Add some drums. And that is basically the instrumental. It's all pretty loopy and straightforward. Um, it's all just about like the the rolling vibe, just consistently moving forward. The breakdown is not not much else come ah. So the breakdown is not much else going, um, but it's just like a little color change kind of for uh, colors and like. Um, mood almost just kind of like like the melancholy comes back with kind of like the flutes and the uh, keys that pete added and everything oh yeah um there's like effects here and there i mean like the white noise whooshes and all that stuff but then there's one like foley kind of element which is the atmosphere which is a field recording of me walking my dog, our dog I used to have, long story. There's even a song about it, so dig back in my discography to learn something. Yeah. Yep. Just like sat, the uh, field recorder like on like a tree stump and then just walked around the field. And that just kind of provides like a bit, a bit of a scene to the song, I guess. Like, uh, I don't want to say cinematic, but just like, it kind of puts you in an environment almost kind of something like that words, right? It like, if I started the tune without that, there wouldn't be a whole lot of interest to the intro, right? But once you have that, you're like, oh, there's someone's walking around. If you're wearing headphones, it kind of feels like you're in the scene, almost like binaural like. And then, you know, there's all the textures of the leaves and the wind and all that. It makes you want to hear what comes up next, I think. And that sound, it basically, it's in the intro, the outro, and the breakdown. Yeah. So yeah, then the last part is all the vocals, which is this yellow bit right here. All, all of this. Yeah, well, not that. So let's minimize the rest of the things. And I'm not gonna go too, keep saying I'm not gonna go too deep, but. So we got Pete's vocals, which are down here. Hall is loads of harmonies and layers and everything. You got mine up here. 
which, uh, you know, let's not talk about mine because, you know, I mean, it's about Pete. And I just happen to feel in the blank a little bit. <laughs> I'm just a pale of emotions that's steady, overflowing. Lost in the my moment, verse. I'm hoping you see my heart swollen. And you know this, you see it every day. Long distance over the phone. And Pete's part. So, I'm not gonna go too much in how I process the vocals. It looks like a ton, but if you look over here, like the mixer channel, but it's really okay, it is, but it's not. It's kind of like iterations of, especially with EQ and stuff. But there's a video on my channel a while back about how I process vocals. And that's more of a concise, like, deep dive in how I do it, I guess. And I normally follow, like, the same thing. So, yeah. All right, so let's just go with Pete's first because he's the professional. And he literally just delivered all this stuff basically perfect, like, processed and everything. And I didn't have to do much. But me being me, I did go in and, like, just kind of do some fades and stuff in between verses just to cut out breaths and things like that, just to make it a bit cleaner. This, it's not something you necessarily need to do all the time, but it's more of a preference. Sometimes you like breaths and stuff, but when there's 20 background vocals and he's so good, all like the <gasps> breaths between words are in sync, but they double up on each other. So you kind of want to cut them out. Otherwise you'll just have like a, <sighs> that kind of sound in the middle of the track. And you don't really need that. Give you all you yeah, individually, they're not processed other than they're just panned around just to get like a the real effect of a choir. And then there's natural chorusing of his voice because of the, I mean, no one other than like, I don't know, like the really good, not. I know what I'm saying this, but like you sing or say something different subtly every time, no matter how much you like rehearse, practice it. So there's always going to be, once you start layering takes and stuff, you have like a natural um, discrepancies between each take that make a bit of chorusing, phasing. Um, and then when you start panning it, you really get like a nice full choir sound. It's not like the same exact take that just kind of doubles and gets louder. It's just like, it fills up. Spectrum. Give you all you need this time, this time, this time. Gonna give you everything and more. Yep, that's that's really it. There are some dips here and there. You can see like automation lines going on. That's more just to for volume and mixing. Automation is key when mixing anything, basically, especially this. Like just to get everything fit together, it's another way to add dynamics in a way. Just like, we're getting louder here. Okay, we're coming back down here. Okay, we're, you know, like if you would read a piece of sheet music, you know, in your orchestra or band, you're gonna have piano where you're playing quietly. Then you have a crescendo to make it louder. And the way you do that within this context is by automatic volume. Or if you're recording yourself, you know, gradually, getting louder and louder and louder then pulling back and that dips into like mic technique and performance and everything but from a technical like tools in the DAW context automation yeah all right that's it if you want to know more about how this was sung or his things I mean just ask Pete he's pretty cool like you can talk to him He'll message, he'll uh, re reply to your message. Maybe you will, I don't know, busy guy. I'm really, uh, you know, thankful he worked with me on this. Um, my vocals, eh, there's nothing to really talk about there. I did record them in a separate project and I like dumped all the tracks over here. So I did a bunch of takes and then I, you know, you comp them all together, the bits that you like from each take um, I try to do it, sometimes I try to do it all in one go, just because I feel like the the performance aspect of it is a bit more consistent and 
then there's also just like the ego version, the the ego side of things. Like, yeah, I can do it in one go, 40 takes later after some practice. But I still comp together some bits that I felt worked better, or maybe I said a certain phrase better than the last time. And then there's just editing to make sure it sounds all consistent. And then what you have left is this main vocal, which is all together as one. I'm just the pill of emotions that steady overflowing. Lost in the moment, I'm open. You see my heart swollen. Yep, that's, I think that's all processed. Yeah, I think I bounced it and then just did a little bit more on it. But compression, EQ, that's mostly with vocals. A bit of saturation, add some character. Um, if I have any complaint, it was my first time I used this mic. It was my first time doing like vocals in this mic, so I didn't like, I should have practiced ahead of time. Cause my whole whiny process of being a vocalist, like this doesn't sound right. And all it is is me being insecure about my voice. But hey, that's life. Um, yeah, and then all these little bits down here are just like doubles and stuff from other takes. Rolling, and you know this. So, you know, the left, right, the to accentuate certain phrases, that kind of thing. Um, and that's it. Yeah, that's the that's the vocal. It's going through some... They're both going through... Pete's and mine's going through, like, delays and... Uh, reverb is tied all together. And, yeah. Rolling. And Can you make me feel? Have a little, a little uh, duet moment right there. But yeah, that is the track. I don't know what else to go to. Um. Yeah, I mean. You can see some stuff on my master channel. I didn't really, I didn't master this. Uh, shout out Dan Newton for hooking me up. I mean, it's his job, but thank you anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a little limiter just cause it's quiet without it when I'm working on it. But it's not doing anything but basically raising the volume. There's an EQ, which is cleaning up like the, the side channel just so I don't have any like stereo bass unnecessarily things going on in the really low area. But yeah, that's that's it. So this is everything and more. And hopefully I went through everything in here. And if you want to know more, <laughs> just message me or comments, anything like that. If you have any questions, yeah, that's it. Later. <laughs>